Good day guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You are watching Old Car Auto Guy and today we might buy a car. So when a customer comes in and wants to do a trade-in, such as this 2006 Buick Rendezvous, we're going to do the exact same thing that you do when you want to buy a car. We're going to take it for a test drive, we're going to see what works and what doesn't work, and then we're going to bring it into the shop and check it over. So let's go for a drive. So some of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the outside. We're going to notice that it's inspected until April, which isn't very far away. A little bit of corrosion here on the aluminum hood. The headlights are fogged up a bit. Inspection runs out next month and we just do a general glance over the vehicle so we will notice that this car the uh, wheels will have to be refinished if it's something that we do keep. We come around to the back the paint is in overall fairly decent condition a few scratches on the bumper it's got four studded winter tires uh, it's got a few scratches in the door down here but all the glass looks good We'll check the windshield, make sure there's no great big rock chips. It's a little bit dirty, but anyways, let's hop in and see what uh, looks like on the inside. So the first thing we notice is the seat belt looks like it doesn't retract very well. Normally we'll look along the bottoms of the doors because that's a common place for rust, especially where we are. Then we look around the vehicle here and the interior seems like it's in pretty good condition. Back seats, back seats are all folded down. Tan is a very hard color to keep clean. Um, with leather, it makes it a heck of a lot easier, but it's gonna, use a, gonna need a little bit of cleanup. But overall, not too bad. Let's see, uh, let's see how she starts. And as we look at the dash, I'm not sure if it comes up on camera, but we're showing a 195,000 kilometers, half a tank of fuel, heat gauge is up there. We'll check the heater, blower works, make sure it switches, and it does. It shows it's got heated seats, let's see if it's got heated seats, we'll have to take a second or two for that to warm up. Radio. You may be wrong, but you may be right. Radio works, and even the time is right. Let's take it for a drive. And part of the reason why we take it for a drive, the same way that you guys do, you want to get the feel of it, you want to feel if there's anything wrong. Uh, you know, we generally will go through and we'll check all the windows, make sure all the windows work, we'll test the cruise control, uh, we'll feel the steering, we'll listen for any clunks, rattles, or shakes. Um, we'll do a hard braking, make sure that the uh, brakes feel good, or they don't, and we'll go from there. So, let's see how she works. So I'm not even out of the driveway yet, and I do notice that I can hear what the, uh, the brake indicators are squealing a little bit. It does have winter tires. It's hard to tell whether it's got a wheel bearing bad or it's just the tires making all the noise. I'm gonna chalk it up the tires, but a lot of these GMs were known to have wheel bearings. It did shift through all the gears. I just come onto it and it downshifted. Cruise control works. Now there is a car coming up here behind me, so I don't want to try too much hard braking, but we are gonna turn off and see what the brakes feel like and see if they uh, pulsate or if there's any grinding or anything like that. So, brakes feel good. Funny thing is about turning the wheel on this vehicle is I turned it all the way around expecting the tires to rub like I do on bubbles. I do hear a little bit of a whine coming from under the hood, so it could be a bearing, a pulley, uh, making some noise, but Again, it's all small stuff. Back in the day, this vehicle probably was an expensive vehicle, being a Buick, and the fact that it's loaded up with leather. Once upon a time, 
they were a really nice car. One thing I will notice though for a, for a GM product is that there are no lights on the dash. Very odd. If there was a wheel bearing that was going bad, it's typical that a GM would set the code and you'd have the ABS and or brake light on together. Uh, so the noise that I'm hearing coming from the tires is likely just that, the tires and nothing to worry about. But generally speaking, when a customer brings a vehicle in and the license is about to run out and the inspection is about to run out, chances are they've had it to a garage to have it looked at and they know pretty good that they're going to have to spend some money on it and that's generally the reason why they will start looking at other vehicles. So I know that both of my hoists are tied up at the moment, so I'm just going to bring it around back. We'll check the ball joints and see what kind of, you know, if there's any play there. Uh, we'll look underneath of it for rust and uh, see what we can come up with. Another thing that I'll usually do is pop the hood, check the fluids, and see if there's anything major to worry about there. So the, really the biggest thing that I'm concerned about is the transmission and the engine. So we'll pull the dipstick. And the oil is actually pretty clean. My guess it was changed recently. Clean the stick off here. And it's right where it's supposed to be. The transmission, we're just gonna check it for smell, make sure it doesn't smell like she's all burnt to pieces. It smells kinda good. I mean, as good as transmission fluid can smell. And other than that, we're going to get the jack and see if we can jack this thing up. So we get her jacked up, we're going to check the tie rods. Feel good. Now we're in here. Outside brake pad looks good. And we'll do this on all four wheels. That one feels good too. are gone on it. And that's just what we suspected was the rocker panels. So for a 2006 with 200,000 kilometers, rusty rocker panels, you know, at the end of the day, we've also got to look at this vehicle to say, what's it going to be worth to sell if it's in perfect condition? Well, according to my books, this thing's probably only going to sell for maybe 2,500 bucks. So to give the customer anything for it at all means we're going to have to put four tires on it soon because it's got studs which have to be off in another month or so and the rocker panels you're looking at probably five or six hundred dollars a side easily to get those fixed so tires there's 400 bucks rocker panels you know we're into 1500 bucks if you're only going to sell it for two or 2500 bucks there's no money in it so i guess we got to figure out what we're going to give it uh, on trade and see if we can put a deal together with that. The customer does know that it needs some work. They do know that it's rusty. They do know that that's the reason why they're trading it in. And we kind of come into this knowing that. So we're going to go in and see if we can't put a deal together. And I'll come back and let you know how we made out. So although we couldn't come to an agreement on the trade-in, we did make a sale on the Jeep Compass behind me. So the 2015 Jeep Compass is gone. We did not take any trades, so no more Jeep Compasses, and we're whittling down through our Jeep inventory. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough on a trade-in and what we do and what we look for when we're taking a vehicle on trade. I hope it comes in useful for the next time you go and purchase a vehicle. So this is what the dealers look at, or at least this is what I look at, and I hope that you understand exactly what we go through to try and make things come together. Well guys, that brings us to the end of another video. I'm just heading down to Motor Vehicle right now. Wish me luck so that we can get that Jeep changed over for this customer. Because you all know how much I love going down to the Department of Motor Vehicle. Anyways, in the description box below guys, there are four links. I hope that you take a look at them. The first one is bonfire.com and that is a link so that you can pick up your very own old car auto guy merchandise. T-shirts and hoodies are available, very reasonable prices. The second link is to Straight Six Fan and Straight Six Fan is my co-host for the Thursday night live stream. You can check out his page, make sure you subscribe to him so that way you get notified 
when the live streams are happening as well. Number three is TubeBuddy. If you're a YouTube creator, you need TubeBuddy. There's a free version, there's a paid version. One offers a little more than the other. I encourage you to go take a look at that and uh, sign up. It'll help you immensely on getting your page and your channel up to speed and be found on YouTube. Last but not least, my Patreon. If you want to help support this channel for other projects like Project Bubbles, then you can contribute on a monthly basis to my Patreon account and we can put that money towards some extra projects. Guys, thank you so much for getting us to where we are today. I can't do it and I couldn't have done it without you. As we move forward into the 1,000 subscriber realm, we have lots to come on this show. So, as I end every video, I'm going to end it with this. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror, guys. I love you so much. God bless. We'll see you again in the next video.